For a deeper look at the people who made up the mob on January 6th, I want to bring in Kurt Brannick. He is an assistant professor of public communication at American University. He has done extensive research on how disinformation can balloon into extremism and steps that can be taken to stop that from happening. Kurt, what new information did you learn watching the previously unseen footage from the attack on the Capitol presented during the Senate impeachment trial? Well, looking at that evidence that I hadn't seen before, I think it was much more harrowing than, than any of us really thought it was on first glance. Um, it showed just how close we were to a real disaster in terms of our democracy and possible loss of life on Capitol Hill that day. I don't think we knew how close we had come to that real disaster until we saw that footage. What are some common threads you see with those who attack the Capitol compared to other extremists you've studied? Well, in some ways, they were unique. Uh, those that attacked the Capitol were comprised of several different far-right type groups. There were QAnon types. There were white supremacist types. Um, but something that was very different with respect to this group was that there were also people in that crowd who you would see as everyday upper class type white people. We had middle class type white people and lower class type white people. And you tend not to see them work together with respect to extremism. So in some ways the group was unique, but in other ways they, they very much weren't in that they were aligned with ideologies of the far right that have been around for several years. The Washington Post actually analyzed the public records of 125 defendants who participated in the storming of the Capitol. It found 60 percent of them had prior money problems, including unpaid taxes and bankruptcy. Is there often a connection between financial problems and a decision to join extremist movements? I don't think there's a direct link between what's often called economic anxiety and uh, extremism. Oftentimes, far-right extremism is explained away with things like economic anxiety. But what happens is extremist leaders, or in this case, even public leaders like former President Trump, are very good at weaponizing that kind of anxiety that people have and motivate them to engage in violence. I think what we saw here was a combination of a buying into a narrative that President Trump sold to many individuals on the right, and he weaponized any kind of anxiety they had, including economic anxiety, to take part in what happened on the 6th. How likely do you think is it that people who stormed the Capitol last month would participate in another extremist riot in the future? That's my concern, especially given what happened in terms of the acquittal of President Trump. Um, I do think the evidence presented by the prosecutors was harrowing, and my concern is that the acquittal of President Trump leaves future leaders um, free to make statements like he did to motivate the far right. Um, I don't know if the people who stormed Capitol Hill will be taking part in any extremist acts in the near future, given that they have been pursued pretty heavily by law enforcement. But that doesn't mean that others will try something similar in the future, given that repercussions seem to not be coming for the leaders. Kurt, is there anything we can do as a country to support Americans who are at risk before they turn to extremism? I think one of the things that we need to really take seriously in this country is teaching people to understand that there is misinformation and disinformation out there that goes against um, what is good for them. Um, we need to teach people to consume media and consume messages on social media more critically than they have been, especially in the last four years. Um, this is particularly true given that, as I said earlier, there seems to be little repercussion for spreading disinformation from uh, right-wing leaders. And it seems that some right-wing leaders have certainly adopted that as a strategy moving forward. So I think we need to be able to teach people to critically consume the material they, they see online and realize that it's not in their best interest to act on it. Kurt Braddock, thank you for your insight.